My name is Jesse and I am the chef and owner of Parlour. We make amazing, funky, delicious, colourful, slightly unexpected, great British food. Butter in the kitchen is the number one product and it's been very handy to use 250 gram blocks which are much easier to handle and I've really, <laughs> I've really appreciated that. I was a bit scared of using the salted product um, but actually for most of the things that we use our unsalted butter for, we put so much salt in it that it ends up probably saltier than the salted products in the first place. So in the grand scheme of things, it probably doesn't matter that much, but guess what? The salted butter turned into a quite spectacular chicken Kiev with all the oozing goodness to come out of it. And we didn't end up using any salt in the garlic butter. We just used our salted butter. Now cheese comes in various guises. We use cheese for cooking and we use cheese on our cheese boards. Uh, and I would say that there's no crossover. The cheese that we use for our cheese boards is only for our cheese boards and it doesn't get used for cooking. And then the cheese that we use for cooking is a slightly less premium product that goes in sauces and cheese custards and Mornay sauces and various things like that. Um, we've been using it in various different ways. Macaroni cheese was one of our requested um, and actually one of our most popular dishes at Parlour. We actually use three cheeses um, in the macaroni cheese. We do a uh, mature cheddar crisp on top, mozzarella to make it all nice and stringy. And um, we also use a parmesan as well to grate on it. So we've been given a few different cheeses. We've been given a tickler mature cheddar and a mature cheddar block. Now we've been using them in different ways. Some of them for melting, some of them for putting in a sauce, some of them for making into crisps. And we've found out that some of them are better suited to different scenarios. So we found the tickler cheddar has been better used for grating and baking and uh, using for a crisp. But it would also be used well for the sauce but the sauce um, worked really well for the mature cheddar block, which is a slightly cheaper, more normal product. The Stilton, uh, Toxford and Tebbett Stilton we used. We've been using that in our blue cheese custard, which is a fairly unexpected dish where we make a kind of creme brulee dip with a crunchy sweet praline on top and lots of little delicious unexpected vegetables to dip in it. So a bit like a fondue. And the Tuxford and Tebbett Stilton really stood up for the creme brulee style finished product that we're doing. So the Treverian Brie, for us, it worked really well for breading and serving with a cranberry sauce for that 1970s classic of fried bread and cranberry sauce. Now quark particularly has been interesting to play with because I was introduced to it by a German chef friend of mine who basically used it for almost everything. Uh, he used it for marinades, he used it for sauces, he used it for little squirts and puddles everywhere all over his fancy plates. And um, we've been trying to work out the best way to use it as well. And we've done an amazing cheesecake out of the quark that we've been given. We have many, many challenges in the dairy supply. One is a never ending upward thing, especially with butter, especially with butter. It, 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 it keeps going up and up and up more than anything else. And I've been kind of slightly brainwashed into the whole French cooking style where you just use a lot of butter because it bloody tastes good. Unfortunately, that has a price um, attached to it. Um, and I am just going to bite the bullet and just charge more for the steak because it's cooked in two packs of butter. Means quite a lot to me because I do care quite a lot about the people that produce the things that we use. I have to remind the trainee chefs a lot that someone has grown something, delivered something, we've prepped it, and then we're serving it and there's all of those steps to consider when he makes too much salad and then he throws half of it away or he 
uh, overcooks the cheese crisps like I know he's doing right now and he ends up throwing half of it away. That he's gone through all of those steps and actually it matters a lot because I care so much about the people that have actually produced the thing in the first place. Now, there are many dairy suppliers out there and available for a top London chef such as I. Um, and I would definitely um, err towards uh, Arla's camp because of their strong links to the people that actually produce the products.